Praise God. Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, Back to Basics Ministries, out of Lithonia, Georgia. You say, well, where in the world is Lithonia, Georgia? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're here. We found this place. God's brought us here. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And he's using us here. Amen. Don't worry about where it is. It's somewhere on the globe. Hallelujah. It's a hot spot. It's one of the devil's hot spots. He's trying to, he tries to shut it down, but he can't. He just can't. Praise God. It's a hot spot. Just like uh, we've got hot spots up in uh, Marysville, Pennsylvania with Ryan Trogler. We've got hot spots where Karen uh, Herzog is up in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. We've got hot spots in Wilmington, Delaware. Loretta Jackson, we've got hot spots in Bear, Delaware. Gene Bratton, we've got hot spots all over the place. You too, Roger Pond, you're a hot spot. Praise God in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and so is your daddy. And so we come to you today in the name of Jesus, giving God the praise and the glory and the honor. There's a hot spot up in Coatesville. Florence Gaffney lives there. Praise God. Sam Gale is at a hot spot all over the map. David King in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Praise God. There are hot spots. The devil's looking at his map, and every day he checks his map, and he sees more hot spots popping up. Oh, man, must be something going on. Must be something going on. Well, you know, it might be because he sent a, a pandemic to the world. He sent a pandemic yeah. to the world. The devil sent a pandemic to the world, and people are highly upset, most highly upset with the devil. And as a result of what Satan meant for harm, God is turning it to good. Folks are getting saved. Folks are getting on fire. People are getting back to the Bible. They're giving God the praise, the glory, and honor. They are praying more. And we could just pronounce benediction right now and say, everybody, have a great day. But I feel, I feel the anointing today, and I feel the presence of the Lord. So we're just going to stay in the presence of the Lord and give God the glory. We welcome all of our listeners all over the world. We welcome our listeners in Cameroon. What the devil meant for harm in Cameroon by shutting down your, your nation long before the pandemic, God's going to turn it to good. So we say to Abel Khan, we say to all of you, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Elijah, all those floods that you're seeing in, in, in western Kenya, you tell the people, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of his might. God's on the main line, ladies and gentlemen. Call him up. Call him up. Well, how can I get closer to God? By calling on the name of Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S. No other name can get you close. Nope, nope, nope. Allah can't do it. Allah is a false god. But Buddha can't do it. Buddha is a false god. The Bible says flee idolatry. You can't worship God with a statue of Buddha in your house. Some of you need to clean your house. Throw out those idols. You can't please God if money is your God. You can't please God if sex is is your God. You can't even please God if you're your own God, if pride is your God. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, y'all want to have church today or what? Y'all want to have a good time in the Lord or what? Praise God. Amen. Give me a sign. Somebody give me a sign that somebody wants to worship the Lord. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness Amen. in the chat window? Can I get Amen. a witness? Praise God. Can I get a witness from Minister Loretta Jackson? Can I get a witness out there, Loretta? Do we want to praise God or what? Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Like the cheerleaders used to say when my daughter was a cheerleader at Chester High School, they had a cheer call. Get fired up. Get fired up. Get fired up. Get fired up. And I mean, they can say it. I mean, they get fired up, get fired up, get fired. You can fire yourself up with Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. You can light your own fire. You can flick your own dick. Praise God. When troubles come, when, when troubles come, you wake up and you see troubles all around you. That's a good sign to worship the Lord because God's got it all in his, in his hands. We do not walk by Sight, we walk by faith. So get fired Amen. up. Get fired up. Get fired up. 
tell your wife, your husband, your child, your kids, get fired up. Tell them stop uh, 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 complaining and grumbling and get fired up for Jesus. You know, those who get fired up for Jesus are going to get through this whole coronavirus thing with uh, 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 shining colors. Those who worship God, those who humble themselves before the Most High God and realize that God is God and Jesus Christ is Lord. And through it all, we are learning that God is almighty. He said, you shall have no other gods before me. And so a lot of us are learning that those things that we prioritized, those things that we set first in our lives, those things that we thought meant so much to us, like hopping in your car and driving to Walmart. You just can't do it as you used to. Or hopping in your car and going to the local club and having a martini with your girlfriends. No, you can't do that anymore. God's got some priorities, ladies and gentlemen. He's shaking the earth. He's shaking the earth. He's shaking things. And it's all for his good. So don't fight against God. We're finding out that we're, we're, we're do, we don't have to do without all that food we've been eating, without all that stuff we've been hoarding. We don't have to have this. We don't have to have three, four cars. We don't have to have this or that. But we can make it with Jesus. We can make it with Jesus. Somebody said, we can make it together if we try, if we try. Talk about Jesus now. We can make it together if we try yes with love in your heart that's a very good start let every man be your brother and I know we can make it and I know we can make it and I know we can make it with God hallelujah praise God all oh, that's introduction I want to welcome you to the worship service today where we celebrate Jesus Christ we celebrate Jesus Christ. We realize that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So shake your neighbor. Praise God. It's all right. You can, you can uh, 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 undistance yourself from your neighbor and shake your neighbor. It might be your wife, might be your husband, might be your child. But hey, Jesus on the main line. Let's listen to the word of God. Let's worship God. Come on, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to ask Ryan Trogler up in Marysville, Pennsylvania. You'll say, where in the world is Marysville? Where in the deuce is Marysville? Don't worry about it. Ryan's there and his light's shining. We're going to ask Ryan to come and lead us in prayer, if he will. Uh, good morning, Pastor. Good morning, church. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another day and letting us rejoice in it with you. Lord, we we ask you to come today to give uh, Pastor Carter the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to teach us your word again today. And Lord, we want you to bless this great nation of America and and, this, and all nations around the world and all their leaderships. And Lord, we want you to, to to bless and heal these people with the, with the virus and and all sicknesses. And, Lord, please help and provide and heal these people who can't go back to work yet. Just keep, please, providing for them. And Lord, we just we just ask you just to come down and heal our hearts. Let us turn to you and and keep walking and walk with us, Lord. And, we just, and please just keep blessing everybody. We'll bless us one on uh, ministry as well. And Lord, we just want to say we, we thank you for everything that you've done and you continue to do for us. Lord, we just say we love you. We just love you, praise you, worship you, and honor you, glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. 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 Thank you, Ryan. Praise God. Uh, shout out to Ryan and Tara and, and, and Jenna up in Marysville, Pennsylvania. Praise God. And uh, thank God. While Ryan was praying, the Holy Spirit just revealed to me how he is just moving all over the earth. God is taking care of people all over the world ladies yeah. and gentlemen, and, and it's amazing. Isn't it amazing how the, the God can be right with you, right where you are, but yet he loves other people just like he loves you. He doesn't love me any more than he loves you, and he's moving throughout the whole world, throughout the whole earth, 
and he's blessing people all over the world, and he's just waiting for people to come to him to 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 uh, denounce their idols and 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 renounce Satan and just humble themselves and and repent of their sins and come to him. Jesus is saying, "Come unto me, all ye that labor." and are heavy laden. I'll give you peace. This is not an American thing. This is not a Lithonia, Georgia thing. This is not a Wilmington, Delaware thing. This is a worldwide thing where God is showing us that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That if you would just commit your ways to the Lord, no matter what circumstances you're facing, if you would just commit yourself to the Lord, you'll see the power of God. You'll see the power of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We, we, want, we want to ask Jackie Carter to come on and give us a greeting. Jackie Carter is, is going to greet everybody and, and, and uh, uh, just say hello to you all and greet you in whatever way she comes to you. Come on, Jackie Carter. Good morning, everyone. It is always a blessing to be in worship service with Back to Basics as well as with each of you. And as Mr. Rogers would say, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. So I'm just mm -hmm. thankful for the sun and the sun that the sun provides. And I pray that you will be in a worship spirit of mind and that your ears, your hearts will be open to the word that God is sending to you today. And at the end of the service, may you not be the same. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. I praise God for Jackie Carter. She is so precious and such a vital part of this ministry. I thank God for you. Thanks, Jackie. And if anybody is uh, listening with you and anyone's online or anyone listening to the recording and you, you're not saved or you're not sure, and if Jesus were to come back today, would you go to heaven with him? You don't know. You're not sure. Then be sure. Get sure. Make sure that you can receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord today. Get saved by inviting Jesus into your life, repenting of your sins. And if you need any special help in that, you want to, uh, someone to lead you in that prayer, you give me a call or, or contact me, communicate with me, and I'll lead you in a prayer. Uh, uh, of, of repentance and get and so that you will get saved. I can't get you saved, but the Lord will save you. And if you've been walking with the Lord for a long time, and you say, "Well, you know, I'm out of fellowship. I'm not where I used to ought to be," then you can get where you ought to be by repenting. And so let's let's um, get rid of that spirit of pride. And let's just trust in the Lord. Let's press. God says, "Press toward the mark for the prize." of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Well, I'm, I'm kind of eager to get into some word today because the word is going to bless you. It's going to bless nations. God, God's going to bless a lot of people through his word. We want to take a look today at our subject. Our subject is biblical causes and the cure for a pandemic. We're going to look at biblical causes and a cure for a pandemic. You know, the folks in Washington, D.C., they're confused. They are confused. Uh, even now to the point where governors are confused. The governors of, uh, 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 you know, the governor of Michigan says one thing and the people say another. The governor of Pennsylvania says one thing and the people say another. The governor of Georgia, uh, his hands are tied. Uh, he's saying one thing and then uh, the president overrides what the governor says. You know, there's so much confusion because of this pandemic. How many of you listeners out there have heard any leader really say, God can solve this if we call on him, how many of you have heard any president, any prime minister, any king, any queen, any governor say, let's call upon the name of the Lord? I'm not talking about uh, being, you know, these religious shibboleths and these religious expressions, you know, the, to 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 uh, sugarcoat somebody or, or just or or to 
uh, stroke somebody. I'm talking about show me a leader, a national leader, a government official, even local officials who say the only way in which we're going to get through this is if we all repent and call upon the name of the Lord. I don't think any of you have heard any. I have not heard any. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan has blinded the leaders of our nation and the nations of the world. He has blinded them, even to the point where the church, the body of Christ, has been blinded by the truth. So what do people do? Well, they come on services like this and hear what I have to say, and then some of them will run to hear what David Jeremiah has to say. Then others are going to run to see what Bob Jefferson has to say. Then some are going to go and see what uh, uh, um, um, T.D. Jakes has to say. And some are going to, they're going to go, they're going to switch channels, run from place to place to find something that's going to tickle their ears. Ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Leroy Carter preaches the Word of God. The Word of God. It's in the Word why we have pandemics. It's in the Word. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, I'm not pointing the finger at China or any lab in Wuhan, and I'm not pointing it at anything in Italy, or I'm not pointing anything in North Korea or South Korea or China or Russia or anything in Washington, D.C. They're all struggling to try to cover up what they all have done. Mm-hmm. But ladies and gentlemen, you show me a leader who's, who's, who's humble enough to say, we're in this situation because of our sins, and I'll show you the cause of the pandemic. You show me somebody like Nehemiah, who was sent by the king of Babylon to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls, and Nehemiah gathered all the people as they walked through the rubble of the walls of former walls of Jerusalem, and Nehemiah said to those leaders, We're in this condition because we have sinned against God and our fathers have sinned against God. It took guts and courage for Nehemiah to say this. Now we're going to look at someone else with guts and courage. We're going to ask Dr. Jean Bratton if she would read to us from 1 Chronicles chapter 21. And let's take a look at the... Third, first, the first 14 verses, Dr. Jean Bratton, we've asked her to read from First Chronicles, that's the Old Testament, not First Corinthians, First Chronicles, chapter 21, and the first 14 verses. Listen carefully to these words after Dr. Jean reads these words. I'm going to present to you a message from the Lord, biblical causes, and the cure for a pandemic. Dr. Bratton. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. And Joab answered, The Lord make his people a hundred times so many more as they be. But, my lord the king, are they not all my lord's servants? Why then doth my lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass in Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Wherefore, Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David. And all they of Israel were were a thousand thousand and a hundred thousand men that drew swords. And Judah was four hundred three score and ten thousand men that drew swords. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Joab. And God was displeased with this thing. Therefore he smote Israel. And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away with the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And the Lord spake unto Gad, David's seer, saying, 
Go and tell David, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Choose thee, either three years of famine or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while that the sword of thy of thine enemies overtaketh thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now, therefore, advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, for very great are his mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel 70,000 men. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Jean Bratton, for reading the word. Thank you all for listening to the word. And we're looking at our subject today, biblical causes and the cure for a pandemic. Praise God. Biblical causes and a cure for a pandemic. Now, a pandemic is greater than an epidemic. A pandemic covers a wide range of territory and impacts a whole lot of people. Um, in, in the 1400s, there was the Black Plague. Millions, millions, up to 200 million people died during the Black Plague. The Black Plague uh, killed uh, most of the world, most of the world. Um, and then there have been other pandemics. Okay, so there are pestilences. There are pestilences. <clears throat> you know, you get your... Um, your and infestation, you get your, your mosquito infestation, you get the, the germs and the diseases that follow after insects, you get uh, uh, viruses and that sort of thing. These are, there are pestilences that take place, and there are plagues. We look at the scripture, we see many plagues that came upon Egypt because they Turn their hearts hard against God. Pharaoh hardened his heart against God and refused to obey God. And God struck Egypt with plague after plague after plague. After about ten plagues, Pharaoh said, enough is enough. Take the children of Israel, Moses, and get out of my land. And so we find throughout the scriptures many times, many times where God will send a plague. He will send a pestilence, and he will wipe out thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of people. God does this, and he doesn't do this because he's evil or, or, or a mean or nasty God. He does this because when people refuse to acknowledge God, when people get to the point they're so puffed up, they kick God out of, out of the program. They don't want to hear from God. Then God will send a plague. He will send a pestilence. He will send a pandemic. And we see pandemics throughout the scriptures. I don't know why our leaders today do not read their Bibles and see, uh, see this. The only leader I've seen pretty close to this was uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo the other day when he said he quoted from Matthew, the book of Matthew, and told people, you need to read the good book and see why we're going through what we're going through. But ladies and gentlemen, the world system is much different from the kingdom of God. We are in this world, but not of this world. Many of us are beginning to see through this, because of this pandemic, that we're different from the world. We think differently. We live differently. We worship differently. The world uh, goes through its worship practices and motions, and, and, and uh, many people are upset because they can't go to their churches where they can be seen of men like the Pharisees. People are having a hard time being shut in and socially distancing themselves. And so there are people, they don't care what the government says, what the rulers say. They're going to uh, get out in the public. They've got to be in their bars. They've got to be on their beaches. 
they've got to be in their uh, parks and, and they've got to be seen among people because people can't stand it when other people don't see them. But ladies and gentlemen, believers, we believe God and, and we obey those who have the rule, rule over us. Now that does not mean we take everything that comes down the pipe out of our ruler's mouth because we are learning firsthand that we have a corrupt ruler who is a liar and a deceiver. And so, but the problem is there are many people in the, in the body of Christ, they take every word that comes out of his mouth and they run with it. And they hate preachers like me who are willing to stand up and say, hey, why don't you believe God rather than believe in so-and-so? Why don't you study the word of God? And the fact that most Christians do not study the Word of God, Florence Gaffney, they don't study the Word of God. They would rather hear what so-and-so has to say. And for this reason, God has an attention getter. It's called a coronavirus pandemic. Man. And it's going to separate the real believers from the, the, the religious folks, the, the folks who go through the motions of religion and the leaders who go through the motions of religion and the followers who follow those leaders, anything the leaders say, there are people who will, who will support it. And in the church, we've got pastors in the leaders' pockets and the leaders are paying their salaries. And so they are afraid to preach the word of God. But because no, no, no politician is paying my salary, and if they were, I still would not turn from the word of God. I choose to preach the word of God and believe the word of God. And when we look in the scripture, Dr. Gene Bratton, when we look at what the scriptures have to say about pandemics and plagues, and pestilences. There are many, many, many examples of where God sent, God sent, God himself sent the pestilence. He sent it. He, he knocked on yeah. Pharaoh's door 10 times and said, greetings, boom, <laughs> flies all over the place. Greetings, boom, frogs hopping all over the place. Greetings, yep. boom, the waters Amen. were turned to blood. Greetings, boom, the firstborn were killed. And, 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 and God would still be knocking on Pharaoh's door right now uh, to destroy every idol that Pharaoh had, every false god, every false notion. And he's going to do the same thing with you and me, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to knock on the door. Greetings, boom. You thought the coronavirus was something. Greetings, Boom. Remember the HIV virus? And, and once, once they found a serum, a cure, the homosexuals came out of the closet even more yeah. uh, than previously. They just came out of the closet. They leaped into God's face, defied God, and then they passed laws in this nation and in other nations. They passed legislation that it was all right for a man to marry a woman. They made it uh, open. They oh, openly man. confronted God. After they found a cure for HIV, that HIV virus, then uh, they had uh, uh, leaders, uh, political leaders, even the President Obama supported same-sex marriages and, and, yes. and the leaders. And so you wonder mm. why a pandemic coming again? Because Man. people only, most people only worship God when it's convenient for them. Most people only worship God when they're desperate. When the, the gays were desperate and men and women were dying because of this HIV virus. And, and, and uh, I had one person personally call me and ask me for prayer. He said he was dying from it and asked me to pray. And I prayed, and God delivered him from it. And then what did he do? After God delivered him from it, he married a man. Uh, mm. uh. So ladies and gentlemen, I mean, how long do you think we can defy God? How long is God going to strive with mankind? Mm -hmm. And and yet yeah. they call preachers like me crazy. You 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 just you just meddling. You just meddling. You don't have any heart. You don't love your neighbor. You just mess with. Let us live our lives the way we want to. Well, that's what yeah. caused the great flood during Mo yeah. and Noah's time. They didn't want to hear from Noah, and they didn't want to hear from David, they didn't want to hear from Paul. They didn't want to hear from Peter. And so their, their solution is uh, 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 fire the sucker. 
If he won't do what I tell him to do, fire him. I hired him. I fired him. We got one in the White House now. Fire the sucker. Give me somebody who's going to do what I say do. Yeah. And 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 uh, if that won't work, uh, then they kill him. David mm. had a hitman named Benaiah, uh, mm. and if if David sent Benaiah to your house, you were doomed. If King David mm. sent Benaiah to your house, you were doomed. You uh, mm. if David sent Benaiah to your house, you needed to just bend over, uh, kiss you behind goodbye, because you were out of here. <laughs> Benaiah was the hitman. And All so right, and so we got one in the White House. He he got his hitmen. And and and, and, and the, the sad thing is he got some of these slunky punk I ain't gonna say that. Punky preachers who'll say anything he says and do anything he says do because they're getting government funding. Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, don't let that stimulus yeah. check don't let that stimulus check deceive you. Take the check. But in November, you vote that sucker out of the White House. Take the check. But you know what to do in November. Take the check. Buy you some groceries. Feed your neighbor. Okay? But you know what to do. Come November, get, it's, time for, it's time to get righteousness in the White House. It's time to get righteousness in your house. It's time to get righteousness back in the church. Some of you churches... Some of your churches ain't going to ever open again. Mm. And if you do, right. you won't be able to practice the same old, same old. It won't be religion as usual. Because mm. God is looking for a change. God is looking for people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. In truth. And so God is looking for men and women who will stand up and say, I stand for righteousness. And I don't care what my friends say. I don't care what my family says. I don't care what he says or she says. I'm going to stand for Jesus. God is looking for people like that. Second Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him. And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can get all kinds of uh, teams to go before the cameras and have your daily press conferences and give your take on what we're doing about the coronavirus and how we're taking the lead and how our numbers are, are dwindling and how we're flattening the curve and all this. But ladies and gentlemen, you can, I mean, you can, you can, you can hire anybody to tell a lie and mm -hmm. you can fire anybody if they don't tell the lie right. I mean, this is the third or fourth uh, press secretary uh, and, and the third or fourth IG. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need men and women who will stand up for truth. I'm not taking any job if I have to lie. You take your mm. job and you, you shove it. I don't want it. If I got to lie for you and cover up for you, oh, no. Oh, no. I'm a child of God. I've been washed mm. in the blood. Jesus reached down into Westchester, Pennsylvania, July 20th, 1969, the same day man stepped on the moon. Jesus stepped into my life and said, I'm going to change your life. He said, I've got a plan for your life. I'm going to give you the gift of salvation. I've got work for you to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I belong to Jesus. I've been purchased with a price, and so have you been. So don't compromise. Don't cave in. Okay, so the HIV virus did not convince people to worship the Lord. They found a cure. This coronavirus, this coronavirus isn't going to convince a whole lot of people to humble themselves and repent. Mm. They come up with a cure. In, in time, the president says by the end of the year they have some kind of antidote, some kind of serum. Some people say it'll take next year sometime. They're the scientists will come up with a cure, but the real cure can come today, can come tomorrow. If we look at Scripture, look at First Chronicles chapter 21. Wow, what a beautiful, what a beautiful passage. The devil stood up against Israel and convinced David to call a census to count the number of people in Israel to number the fighting men that you have who can go to war because the devil is going to try to blow David's mind up to 
make him think he was more than what he was so he can attack every nation and build a kingdom like he had never seen before. The devil had, had his uh, goals and desires for David. And God had told David not to number the people. God has specifically said there will be no census, no numbering. God said, I am your God. I will take care of you and this nation. But David yielded to temptation. And as great as David was, we see him yielding to temptation. We saw this with Bathsheba. We see it again with this census. And we see in our lives, no matter how strong we think we are, if we don't listen to God, there's only one other voice that we're going to listen to, and that's Satan, and he can use our own voice, that inner voice. And, and the scripture says, why are there wars within you? Why are there lusts? Because we yield to that temptation in us, and Satan knows how to tempt us. He knows what bell to ring. He knows what, 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 what to flash in front of your face. He knows what your price is. And so David, uh, David's pride, his pride was attacked. And David's pride to build up a great army and to build up a great kingdom, he went against God's word. God said, do not number. Don't worry about how many fighting men you have. Don't number them. But David called Joab and called his generals and his, his committee and said, I want a census. Give me a count of all the fighting men and all the tribes of Israel. Go. And Joab said, David, now David, whoa, 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 whoa. Joab had the courage to stand up against him. We need some people in Washington, D.C. who are courageous. I mean, some of these so-called preachers and evangelicals, some of you need to, get up, need to get some courage, get some courage and stand up against what is wrong. And even if it costs you your life, even, ladies and gentlemen, Hey, hey, Pastor Sam Gale, even if it costs you your life, we have responsibility. If it costs me my life, we have a responsibility to stand up for Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. And stand up against evil. And Joab stood up against uh, David. David said, David, out, uh, 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 David overrode him. Just like we have a president who overrides anybody who comes with some sensible solution to anything, a loving solution. And so Joab had to obey his king, and he went and numbered all the people in the tribes except for the tribe of Levi and Benjamin. Joab, Joab had some sense. Joab knew he couldn't go into Levi talking about we're going to number the people because the Levites would have killed him. He knew better than to go into Benjamin uh, because the Benjamites would have put him to death. And so Joab numbered all of the tribes in Israel except for Levi and Benjamin. And then uh, came up with some numbers like in the ten northern tribes, he came up with 1,400,000 men ready to fight. Those are men between the ages of 20 and 50 fighting men. And then in the southern tribe of Judah, 470,000 men ready to fight. So almost 2 million men ready to go to battle anytime David called them to go to battle. And anytime somebody ticked David off, David could send 200, 2 million men against them. You know, when you get a flake in the White House, you get a fruitcake in the White House. When you get a loose cannon, in the White House, ladies and gentlemen, it's dangerous. That's why the church needs to pray. We need to pray for our president. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray that his eyes open. We need to pray that he get, his heart was softened, that he get a human heart, like Nebuchadnezzar's heart was changed into a human heart, from an animal's heart to a human heart. That's why the church needs to pray. And the church needs mm -hmm. to take a stand for holiness and righteousness. And so David numbered Israel against God's will. Verse 7 says, And God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. Look, God smote Israel. God sent the pandemic, ladies and gentlemen. 
Verse 8, And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly, because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. God smote the entire nation because of the arrogance, the pride, the puffed up, puffed upness of the leader, the defiance of the leader. Ladies and gentlemen, America voted this man in, and America mm -hmm. is reaping what America has sowed. You reap mm -hmm. what you sow. You, re mm. you put a whoremonger in there, you put a racist in the office, you put a liar in the office, you're going to reap what you sow. Mercy. Yes. Yes, I said it. Yes, I said mm. it. And you Praise know, the you sad God. thing is, if we were to have an election tomorrow, America will put that same man back in office. No, mercy. No, no. That's how far we've gotten away from God. That's how far we've gotten away from righteousness and holiness, you, uh, some of you, I know some of you are saying, well, you're condemning, Pastor God. No, I'm not. I'm preaching. I ain't condemning. Mm -hmm. I'm preaching. Somebody's got to blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm in God's holy mountain. Well, you ain't right yourself, Pastor God. No, I ain't right. I confess. I confess I ain't right, but I love the Lord, and I fear the Lord, and I'm doing the best I can to serve him, and not, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to speak. What God puts on my heart to speak. Well, we we'll get you. We we'll get you. We we you're on our list. Well, be that as it may. But my Bible tells me no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Mm -hmm. My Bible tells Daddy. me when the enemy comes upon me like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. And my mm -hmm. Jesus says, Don't be afraid. My Jesus says, lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. And he's saying the same thing to you, ladies and gentlemen. It's in the Bible. And so David said, Lord, I have sinned against you. And, and, and David had sense enough to see that this plague, this pandemic, this thing that God, uh, that, that, well, even before the pandemic came, Okay, David realized after the census he had sinned against God. And then David told Gad, his prophet, his seer, uh, when Gad came to him, Gad said to him, God's going to give you three choices. He'll give you three choices. Number one, you can enter into three years of famine. Now, this is the whole nation, ladies and gentlemen. You can enter into famine, three years of famine. Or you can have three months where your foes will destroy you. Or you can have three days with the hand of the Lord upon you. Choose which one you want. Three, month, three years of famine, three, year, three months of being suppressed and defeated and destroyed by your enemies or three days <coughs> of the Lord's hand upon this nation. And David said, I am in a strait. I'm in a great strait. In other words, I'm in deep dew. Any farmer mm -hmm. would know what that means. I'm in deep dew. Mm -hmm. I'm in a no-win situation. I'm in deep dew. Mm -hmm. I'm going to catch it no matter what I choose. But, but, he said, I would rather fall into the hands of God than into the hands of my enemies. Because I know if my enemies have anything to do with it, they will destroy me. So I choose the three days of being mm -hmm. under the hand of God. And so, verse 14, so the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel. The Lord sent a pandemic, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to this. There fell of Israel 70,000 men. 70,000. Now, we're up pretty close to 90,000 in America soon. Oh, yeah. And then you multiply the world. Okay, one-third of the deaths in the world are happening in America, so we're pretty close to 300,000 worldwide. 
these are deaths, not people afflicted. And then mm -hmm. all the suffering that the people who are afflicted have to go through, the days yeah. of isolation, the days of uncertainty, fever, temperature, shakes, chills, mm -hmm. isolation yeah. from their families, and, and not mm -hmm. knowing whether they're going to live or die, the horror, mm -hmm. the fear that yeah. comes along with this, this, this uh, coronavirus. So David said, I am the, David said, I am the cause. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to admire people like Nehemiah and David who said, I am the reason why this has happened. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe, I truly believe that when history writes the story, the true story about this current administration, how they got into office, the mm. things they did that were covered up, and the things mm. that a lot of you evangelicals out there are helping him to cover up. Yes, yes, you are. Because mm. you believe everything that's happening. You believe every report you get. And, and, and the things that a lot of Republicans are saying and Democrats are saying that, I mean, even the church has gotten to the place that we're no long, we no longer belong to Christ. We belong to a re a, a Republican or a Democratic Party. Our God is a Republican or a Democratic organization. It's a sin and a shame. Mm -hmm. But David had the courage to say, I am the cause of this pandemic. Pharaoh would not say, I am the cause of millions of people being destroyed in Egypt. He was too puffed up, too proud. He could not say, I am the cause of this. But David said, I am the cause. It's because of what I did. You know God can destroy a whole nation, ladies and gentlemen, because of the choices that a leader makes. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. why you've got to pray before you vote. You've got to pray before you endorse somebody. Adolf Hitler led a whole nation to destruction. The mm -hmm. Germans worship him as God. They believed every lie. He bought up the press. He, 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 he burned up all the Bibles and the books. He killed all the preachers. Mm. He destroyed men and women of goodwill. He built a political machine and he terrorized people. And he controlled nations. And Germany will never, will never be what she used to be because she believed the lie. The same thing happened in, in Italy with Mussolini. The same thing happened in, 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 in Africa, in, in uh, 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 Idi Amin, in Rwanda. People believe these leaders, these leaders suppress the, the, the news and the press. They silence people. They put people to death. People die mysteriously. They, they, they disappear with the quickness. And then the mm. only news you get is slanted. Fake news. Fake news is nothing new. Fake news began in the Garden of Eden. Mm. And the church is too busy trying to raise money, trying to sell those dinners. Now they, you, you call certain churches, they will deliver your, 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 your chicken dinner to you. Mm -hmm. They deliver that dinner and throw in some ice cream uh, dessert for free. Well. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I saw a man on Facebook yesterday, he had his mask on, a preacher, I know him. He's from Chester, Pennsylvania. He had his mask mm. on, preaching. But the caption was, send your, send your tithes to the pastor. Had his number there. Some of, you, some, mm. of you, some of you preachers still into that money. It's money, money, money. Now you know how to do online ministry. But it's all about money. It ain't going to get it. it ain't, mm. Money ain't going to get it. The church is never going to be the same. It's about relationship with Jesus. 
and teaching people Amen. how to get saved and how to live holy and how to obey yeah. the holy God who created us and to honor him and respect him and, and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That's what this is all about. Yes. And so we see many biblical examples, and I could give you Leviticus chapter 26, I could give you Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I could give you other examples. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 7, there be famines and pestilences and earthquakes and, and uh, diverse uh, in diverse places, Jesus said, Luke 21, 11, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. There are going to be more pa pandemics, just like when the AIDS <laughs> pandemic uh, 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 was dissipated, people sinned even more. Okay, the lesbians came out of the closet. Mm, lesbians yep. started passing churches, and and the lesbian, uh, the the first lady of 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 the church was another woman. Mm. A man pass, a woman passing another a woman as the first lady, calling mm. the first gentleman. And uh. and, and the gay the gays began pastoring churches, and the first lady yep. was a gay. Oh, and so, geez. and so, and, and people are people defy God, but God is not going to strive with us. This this coronavirus is just a piece of cake as to mm. what's going to come. Jesus says, "Worse things will come until mm. He comes back and takes the church home with Him." So, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to get to the point where you you got to make a decision. Are you going to believe God? Or are you going to believe uh, uh, your political leaders? Are you going to mm -hmm. believe God? Or are you going to believe the people with the, the PhDs? And now, every PhD is not a bad person. Dr. Jean Bratton has a PhD, and she's a good gal. Are you going to believe <laughs> God? Or are you going to believe the scientists? Are you going to believe God? Or are you going to believe your ward leader? You gonna believe God? Or you gonna believe uh, 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 the athletes who've been hired to promote certain politicians? And the hmm. church is still at a place where we have not gotten to the point that we will turn to the Word of God and study to show ourselves approved unto God. And the Christian community still not at a place where. We are humble enough to fall on our face before God and say, God, forgive us. We repent. Show us your way. Even with this coronavirus, we're probably top 90,000 today. Mm. Nice. And then they're talking about a second wave. Oh, but then there God. are... are, are uh, uh, COVID-20, COVID-21, COVID-22, COVID-23, this and that, waiting, waiting. Come on, coach, put me in. Saying to the devil, come on, coach, put me in. Mm. And the church is trembling. And God did not give us a spirit of trembling and fear. He gave us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And we can bind these demons. We can bind these powers and principalities, ruler spirits, these pandemics. These are demonic forces. But, but, look at what's happening. If God permits it, it's going to come. Well, when is God going to lighten up and, 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 and cut us some slack and, 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 and take this thing away from us? When you humble yourself, when you do Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and when I say you, I mean me too. When we humble ourselves, when we pray, when we turn from our wicked ways, when we call upon the name of the Lord, then he will hear from heaven, he will forgive our sin, he will heal our land. Look at what God did with David. God sent the pestilence for three days. Mm -hmm. 70,000 people died 
in three days. Mm. Now, almost 90,000 have died in America alone over a period of three or four months. Mm -hmm. Mm. And three months of that time was since the time uh, uh, before that the president said, this is just a big hoax. It's just a democratic hoax. Mm. See, you got a doofus in the White House, first of all. And his eyes need to open up to God, who God is. Mm. And, 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 and the nation, the nation, because the nation worships this guy. Mm. It's an affront to God. God said, you should have yeah. no other gods before me. And it's dangerous to worship your political leaders. They are not God. God mm-hmm. allows, he permits people to have office. And if they abuse the office, God will take care of them. God will take care of him. Dinky will get his due. Yep. But the church, why does the church have to suffer in ignorance when there's so much power and authority available to us, Jesus said, Behold, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose shall be loose in heaven. There is a cure for the pandemic. Let me give you these few things. These are suggestions. Number one, don't panic. Number two, trust God. Number three, walk in love. Number four, persevere. Number five, be a witness for Jesus. I'm going to give you this list again as we look at this pandemic. And even worse is going to come, but God has given us a solution. He's going to take care of his people. Oh, yes, yes, Christians are dying because of this pandemic. There will be casualties in every war. But don't panic. Don't lose your trust in God, ladies and gentlemen. Walk in love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Don't turn bitter towards people. Don't start pointing the finger of hate and the blame towards others. Persevere. Hang in there. Hang in there. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. And be a witness for Jesus. I mean, worship the Lord Jesus Christ like never before. Tell everybody about Jesus. Tell everybody about Jesus. The Bible says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Praise God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. Glad to share with you. And um, there are more uh, biblical cases of pandemics, but there's only one cure. That cure is the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we repent, when we humble ourselves, when we say, it's because of me, and my sins, and we're not pointing the blame at anybody else when we say, it's because of me. I have sinned against you. Forgive me, Lord. Watch how God turns things around. He'll turn things around. He'll turn things around. David Carter in Dubai, we're going to ask you to come in a a moment and say hello to us, but he's going to turn things around in Dubai. He's going to turn things around in Asia. He's going to turn things around in Africa. He's going to turn things around in Europe. He's going to turn things around in the United States of America. He's going to turn things around when the people of God call upon him. Father God, we thank you. Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all iniquity. And forgive us of our sins. We praise you and we thank you. Lord God, reveal yourself and your power to your people. Help us to stay in perfect peace as we keep our minds on you. Heal the sick. Deliver the bound, God. We trust you for the cure for what ails us. We trust you no matter what we face. 
we put our trust in you, Lord. I thank you. I praise you and bless you and honor you. Amen. Praise God. We're going to end the recording. This, these recordings are on my YouTube channel, Leroy Carter forward slash YouTube, on the website, our website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com, or you can get them by contacting me. We'll send them out to you.